Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a very interesting keyboard. I've got to say that the in-stock, affordable, budget, whatever you'd like to call it, the game is changing. Keyboards we would have never dreamed would be even available for in-stock are now available and very well priced. Today we're taking a look at one of those. Uh, this is from XVX. Now, a lot of you guys might know them from their keycaps. They do have some pretty cool low profile. They call it the XVX profile keycaps. I have a few sets of them and I like them. Most of their keyboards though have pretty much been, maybe not rebrands, but very, you know, similar 60%, 65%, but they are starting to come up with some interesting keyboards. This is not the first one from theirs that I've seen that I like. But today we're taking a look at the M87 Pro. This one's the Coral Edition. Um, unfortunately, after they said they were going to send me this one, they released the Retro version, which is, would have been the one that I picked. But um, I may be getting one of those and then doing a giveaway. But we'll see about that. Anyway, this is the M87 Pro. It sells for under a hundred dollars it's a gasket mounted keyboard with a screen yes let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have in here all right first i'm just going to take a look at what's included in the box everything's nicely organized in a little side box here all right so here's the two well there was the 2.4 gigahertz dongle so we have the 2.4 gigahertz dongle since it's loose, I'm going to assume there may not be a pocket in the case. When you're using 2.4 and you have a USB dongle, it's so much better when you design a pocket for it in the case. Because I literally have a Ziploc baggie full of these. I don't know what they go to. It's got a USB-C to USB-A cable. This is one of the thinner ones that I've seen with keyboards. It would be nice, though, if this included a little clip at least to be able to save it with the cable as i've seen other manufacturers do but we don't have that in this case then we have a ziploc baggie no we have a standard switch wire switch and keycap puller it's in a sealed bag that's the first time i've gotten this in a sealed baggie all right well we all know what that is and then it looks like we've got a couple of extra keys which is nice, though I, I also like when they include extra switches. So this appears to be mainly for switching over between uh, Windows and Mac, as well as some different colored arrow keys. Cool. And here we are. Here is the XVX M87 Pro, and this is the Coral colorway. I've got to say, I do love how the design is incorporated into the case so this is a it's a very unique design i've seen some other coral keyboards but it's usually just a color and then you add the coral keycaps tell this is cherry it looks like a cherry profile but it looks a little bit more sculpted than a cherry i have to look up um, um, while we got this out let's see what we've got here's a switch we have all right these are otamu Oh, that's a nice linear. No ping whatsoever. It's a nice, it's a long pole too. It's sticking out. I would guess it's probably got a 3.8 millimeter travel. I'll have to look that up and confirm when I do the technical section. But while we're here, let's see what we've got. All right, we do have a... Wait a minute, is that... It looks like we have a IPXE or or PE foam type sheet over the PCB. We have north facing LEDs, and we do have five pin hot swap compatibility, which is a very nice plus. We do have a pretty thick, feels almost like a pour on um, plate PCB dampener, and then there seems to be maybe an open cell foam down below. I, I gotta say, I'm I'm curious as to what 
I have not come across an Otemu linear, white linear, like this, net. Honestly, this is comparable, I would say, to a Gatoron Pro Red. I mean, it's light. That's why I say Pro Red, but with a heavier spring, it'd be just as smooth, if not maybe a little nicer than a yellow. But I'll have to test that further. This is my initial impressions. All right. Let's see about these stabilizers. What do we got here? All right. Let's take the switch out. Just to confirm. Yeah, there's absolutely no ping. I do on the stem. Okay. Yep, it's lubricated. It's lightly lubricated, but... It was enough to do the trick because... And we can see it's a long pull. It's a nice sounding little switch. Um, I, I, I gotta say, not all Otemu switches are bad. <laughs> I do like some of them. Let me go ahead and take these stabilizers out. They are the creamy milky ones, but they are very well attached. Yeah, they're on here tight. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're... Tolerances on these are actually pretty good, and... They, they did dab some lubrication on there. It may not be as nice as I'd like it to be, but we're going to leave that alone for now. I will be coming back to this to mod it, and we'll see what we can do. Um... You can see the sheet. I wanted to see if there was holes. Does not look like there's the ability to do a PCB stabilizer. And to the plate, that is a steel plate. So we're still dealing with a steel plate, which it's going to take a little while, I think, for manufacturers to move away from this. I mean, aluminum, PC plate. Um, there's so many different options, uh, but steel, I think, needs to be one that's just not used anymore, even with dampening. Just, I don't, I, it's too heavy, and it's just something that you're going to have to mod if you want. You want to get rid of that resonance, that, that big steel plate, in my opinion, causing, causes way too much resonance. So, let's go ahead and load this back on. I gotta say, out of all the stock keyboards that I deal with, these are up there as far as the stabilizers go. They sound... That one needs a little bit of work, but... Overall, they sound better than I would expect for the milky colored ones. Not that all milky colored ones are the same, but I've just found more of them to be rattly than not. So, since we are dealing with a wireless keyboard, let's go ahead and... Oh, man, we only got one set of feet. I really, really like, especially... I mean, I've seen it done on metallic boards, but uh, if you've got a plastic board, two sets of feet. I mean, just putting one set of feet on there is... The more choices you've got, the more customers are going to be happier with you know, the choices, because the more likely you're going to have an angle on there that's going to fit them better. But that's not that big of a deal. We'll see what the differences are when we go ahead and do the technical section. Looks like we have... Looks like we have eight screws holding the bottom down, and we will come back to this when we come to mod it. But let's go ahead and see what this baby looks like on... All right, so there we see the screen. Right now it's showing us that it's in Windows mode, and, well, I guess it does its battery saver. But it's a nice, clear color um, screen, and we will take a look at the software here shortly to see how we can customize that, because it does say it's customizable. All right, I'm going to plug it in real quick. We can keep that on. Oh, oh, 
Oh, okay, so having it here, oh. having it plugged in, we see the charging indicator, but if we start turning, we can connect, we can go to system, we can go to effects, color, brightness, speed, volume, and language. Oh, and there's an animated GIF already. So I think you can load up several screens if I'm not mistaken. But I gotta say, I like that. I can have a cool little animation. Now, if I could add my words per minute, that would be even cooler. But I'm not going to expect too much. But I, I gotta say, the uh, the definition on here is quite quite nice. I mean, I'm trying to get the glare out of there, but. It's actually a very, very nice picture for a screen on a keyboard. And it's actually bigger than a couple of the other keyboards I have with screens. So I gotta I gotta say they did a good job there. And then we keep scrolling. If I go to let's say system. Alright, okay, so I can switch between Windows and Mac. Connect, I can decide the mode that I'm in. The effects, I can scroll through the different effects. All right, that's a solid one. Then I think I can go to color. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I think, ah, RGB, red, orange, yellow. Okay, I gotta say, this is one of the cooler implementations of a screen on a knob. I, I like this. I like this a lot. Yeah, I think that color. Yeah, that looks nice. It's intuitive. I was able to figure out how to make it work without having to pull out the manual. I like that. As a software developer, mostly back end, though, I had to do interfaces more times than I care to count. Um, the less you have to onboard, the less you have to explain how to use an interface, the better. If it's if you're doing an interface for somebody that you know an accounting system and an accounting firm well they should be able to glean what steps they have to take because the interface should walk them through what it is they're going to do so i feel that interface design not only on hardware products but software products are extremely important yes you should always include a manual but when someone who has been using x product or is in x field if the software is comprehensive or the product is comprehensive enough, they'll be able to do most, if not all, of the functionality and the features. They'll be able to take advantage of them without having to read because it's intuitive and it tells you what to do. So I've got to give um, XVX mad props on this. Now, the design, I've got to say, it's actually quite interesting. And I really, the more that I look at this, I'm like, man, I really want that retro gray one because <laughs> it's really, really nice. But, um, yeah, we have uh, a really nice profile. Yeah, it's weird. Like, this tall cat really looks like an OEM. It looks a lot taller than a cherry. What does their website say? All right, so they're PBT. And this switch is an Otemu White Prelude Linear. Die sub. Oh, this is saying this is XVX profile, but XVX profile is usually a little bit not quite as tall. Huh. But that with the retro gray, the profiles are OEM. Has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, Bluetooth 2.4 type C. Alright. So it does look like we have EBA, EVA foam for between the plate and the PCB. And then sponge case, very likely um, neoprene um, or a silicone rubber. Although it looked like an open cell foam. I do call it a foam. So function numb.
This is to adjust the volume, press FN knob. Oh, yep, that's doing the volume. Okay. So that's, a get, I guess, like a shortcut to doing the volume and put it into volume mode. And then if I do it again, then it... Oh. And then it goes back into the menu. All right. So it's a quick way to switch on to just volume if that's all you want to use. But if you want to switch it back off... I like the implementation. I really, really do. Now, I'm honestly a bit surprised with how nice it sounds. Could it sound better? Yes, but out of the box, under $100, programmable screen knob TKL, though obviously we've scooted down instead of having that blank space right here. They've arranged it, but this is not going to be Honestly, I would have been fine without this row, but some people depend on it, and it's there. So, uh, just real quick on the switch that they have. Uh, it's a 45 gram, which I thought, like I read. Um, it says it's got a 4 millimeter total travel, though it, it was sticking out just a bit. So, hmm. I don't know. Just the specs. Today, we're taking a look at the XVX m87 pro this is a three mode tkl style keyboard from xvx that includes both a knob and a programmable oled today we're taking a look at the coral c model but it's also available in a retro gray colorway this keyboard msrp is for 99 dollars it does come preloaded with otemu white linear prelude switches and PBT XVX die sub keycaps. The battery for this keyboard is 3000 milliamp hours and it does include a 2.4 gigahertz dongle and is also Bluetooth compatible. The weight of this keyboard is 1027 grams and the chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters above the typing surface while the back sits at 39 millimeters providing for a default typing angle of five degrees. Flipping out the included set of feet will raise the back up to 47 millimeters, changing your typing angle to 9 degrees. So for the software of this keyboard, it's uh, pretty simple. It's very comparable to a lot of the um, pre-made and stock keyboard software that we see out there. There's three or four different variations and basically uh, OEMs take them and they match them up. Um, it gives you the ability to do uh, some basic key rebinding as well as selecting your colors and also uh, creating and uploading a GIF for your screen. Um, and it does say that it, it has storage for several different um, uh, animations, uh, but I wasn't able to, to see if it's two or three. I think it may de be dependent on size. But, I've got to say, honestly, we are looking at a great keyboard at a great price. Yes, at this price, there are other keyboards available, um, even getting into, you know, aluminum cases. But, <laughs> I won't say that I prefer plastic over aluminum or aluminum over plastic, but... Each one has its own tone, its own feel, its own weight. If this is something that, you know, it's going to be going on the road with you, which, don't get me wrong, there are aluminum kits out there that offer um, wireless functionality, but there's still some issues with, you know, range and everything because you're basically, you know, the, the, the PCB with the antennas are sitting inside of a what is basically a Faraday cage. So connections aren't yet the best although a couple of them are better than others but that being said if you want something that's you know it's substantial but it's not heavy um that can go with you and then has the the screen i gotta say i take my um oh i don't oh here it is i uh take my ng68 i pretty much keep this one packed in my laptop bag with my thinkpad Maybe you can see why. Uh, but whenever I, I go anywhere and I turn this keyboard on and people see 
the display on it, they're like, what is that? Oh my good, what, what? And your knob goes to the side and you could, what, what? So, um, you know, part of it is just a personalization effect. Um, I know there are other keyboards out there that will allow you to do a little bit more programming to them, but it does require actually some coding. Now, I would like to see that happen with some of these in-stock keyboards. I think that it probably will here in the near future, but for what they're doing right now, I got to give them props. This is a nice keyboard. I do, do, I do wish that it did have something other than a steel plate because that steel plate, and it still has, sounds like it has some hollowness in there, despite it having all of this um, dampening that it does have. So I, though, am very curious because I think I could take this keyboard to another level. Um, I will be coming back to this. I may come back to this when I receive the Retro Gray, as I've requested to review that one as well, uh, though they're low on stock because obviously it's quite popular. Um, but once I get that one, I may wait until then to do the mods and then maybe go for a creamy type of sound profile with one and then maybe a thocky or maybe one silent and one creamy i don't know i think i can get a creamy tone out of this because of the way that it's built and the sounds that i'm hearing out of it right now but i know i will be able to make it sound better though it is not awful in the state that it is i've got to give them props for those otemu um switches i, I don't know i had not seen them before they're long pull otemu switches white um i'd actually like to get a batch so i could try them on some other keyboards because they're they're comparable, if not maybe even a little better than your standard Gatoron yellows. Blasphemy, I know, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this XVX M87 Pro. Again, it's available in both this Color C colorway, or Coral. It is available both in the Coral C colorway, as we have here today, as well as the retro gray they both go for the same price only real difference besides the colors it appears that the uh, retro gray has oem keycaps and this one has xvx profile keycaps though i have some xvx profiles and they're really low profile so perhaps there's two different xvx profiles not sure but the game is changing i'm really happy to see these kind of boards that we're seeing nowadays um I've, I've got to say the things that are that are happening in the market, I just wouldn't have predicted this a couple of years ago. So what is available today in stock is some stuff that we can only dream about, you know, spending a lot of money and waiting a year or two <laughs> before we got it. Um, I do think that we are seeing either the last or penultimate year before group buys are just a thing of the past. Um, I have my own reasons against them. I like that companies are moving towards pre-orders, meaning that they are going to have a group buy period, but then the keyboard is going to be an in-stock product after that. So, And that's what most manufacturers seem to be following, though everyone seems to have a little bit different of a explanation on the differences between group buys and pre-orders. and. If it's complicated to explain the model under which you want to buy a product, that's probably not the best model. <laughs> the majority of products on the market today, you look at it, you like it, you customize it, it has the options to customize it, you buy it, it gets shipped to you. Not you pay for something up front, hope that it gets made, and hope that it gets made in the 6, 8, 10, 12 month time frame that they give you and then maybe receive something that might be close to what you wanted, but they had to make a whole bunch of cut, cutting corner. They had to cut a whole bunch of corners to get to the price point that they originally had, and you end up with something you don't like, and it's outside of your window for, um, you know, getting a, a charge back or a refund. So I think that we will be seeing the end of group buys, but that's just my own personal opinion. But when you have keyboards like this, 
on the market. Yes, it's not an aluminum keyboard, but it's still, this is a nice keyboard. And I mean, even a couple of years ago, something with these features would have cost twice, if not more. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this M87 Pro XVX uh, Coral Seaway with white linear Otemu's pre-looped um, that are actually pretty good. And like I said, I will be coming back to mod it, hopefully when I get the retro gray so that I can do both of them side by side and really show you guys the range because there's a lot of room in there. Room inside of a keyboard case means more space to put things that will affect the sound in positive or negative ways, depends. Sometimes you just gotta test it out and see what works best. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.